Welcome to Bench and Tips. Today, we'll learn how to create programs using sequences and basic loops in machine logic. For today's tutorial, we'll be using a two-axis pick-and-place machine with an outfeed conveyor. If you'd like to follow along, you can find the link to the design in the description below. If you're using your own design, make sure you've added a machine motion controller prior to getting started. The session will be broken down into two main parts, sequences and basic loops. Part 1, Sequences. We'll begin by opening the machine logic editor at the top of your screen. As you can see here, the machine has been pre-configured. However, if you'd like to learn more about how you can do this yourself, you can refer back to our video on programming linear actuators found below. We'll start by creating a new application in the Visual Sequence tab and name it Pick and Place. The pane on the left is where you'll find the variable section, which we'll touch on in a later video, as well as our sequences. A machine logic application is essentially composed of two parts, the main sequence, which is the entry point of your program, and child sequences, which are smaller groups of commands that can be executed from other sequences. To help keep your program organized, you can add as many child sequences as you'd like. For now, let's create a child sequence and name it home. Here, we'll add the commands that will home our two-axis system. Now, let's create another child sequence and call it pick and place. In this sequence, we'll add the commands that will move over to the pick location, simulate a picking action, then finish by moving over to the place location. Once complete, we'll go back to our main sequence to build our program. From the Add Command icon, select Add Execution and make sure the homing sequence is selected from the drop-down menu on the right. From the Execution menu, you'll see that there are various options that you can select from. The two that we'll be looking at today are Execute in Series and Execute in Parallel. Execute in Series will execute the selected sequence commands one after another, whereas Execute in Parallel will have the commands play out at the same time as the ones in your current sequence. We'll build up the rest of our program using commands that we've seen in previous videos, such as start and stop continuous movement for conveyors. Once complete, your program should look something like this. To simulate, let's press play. Here, as we've selected execute in series, your second command will wait for the first command, the home sequence, to be finished before starting. Therefore, your conveyor will not start moving until your X and Y axes have successfully homed. Part 2. Basic Loops Loops are useful functions to use when you'd like to have a particular set of actions or sequences played more than once. In our case, we'd like to have the pick and play sequence run a few times. To do this, we'll delete the original execution command and replace it with a loop command from the add command list. First, we'll select the pick and play sequence to loop. From here, we'll select how we would like to have the loop run. The two basic options are to have it run forever, which will loop the sequence until the user terminates the program, or to have it run based on a set count, which will loop the sequence a set number of times. This is the one we'll select, and we'll have it run twice. The third option, condition, will be covered in a later video. Now that we've built our program, let's press play and see how it runs. If you ever have any additional questions or comments, feel free to check out our user form linked below. That wraps up our session on programming using sequences and basic loops. Thanks for watching, and happy designing!